What's up everybody? Welcome to Balkan Motor. Today we're going to be talking about suspension geometry, a topic I've noticed a lot of people seem to be interested based on the YouTube analytics and as such I figured why not just do a video about it. Uh, so we will take a look at the effects uh, that fork geometry, tire selection and other changes have on the overall geometry of the motorcycle. Then once we've kind of established that knowledge uh, we're going to take a look at uh, applying these learnings to the Cafe Saber that I've been building and in order to make some more edu uh, educated decisions on the next steps with the suspension and the running gear uh, that I will be putting on. So let's check it out. All right, so in order to cover this topic, uh, we're going to be using uh, my trusty suspension geometry tool that I've built here. Um, so let's begin by first kind of covering the basic parameters that the uh, geometry of a motorcycle should consider. The first of which is the stem rake. So the stem, stem rake is essentially the angle between uh, the vertical line uh, going through the frame uh, and the angle that the fork stem is welded to uh, the frame at. Next we have the wheelbase, a measurement measured on the ground between the rear axle and the front axle. Uh, so pretty much more or less how long your bike is, um, give or take. Next we have uh, fork length. This is the measure of uh, the distance between the um, mounting point of the front axle uh, where it, uh, it's centered uh, at the bottom of the forks to the top uh, most area of the fork that's just at the level of the top yoke of the triple tree. So if your forks extend beyond the triple tree, that space above it doesn't actually count. It's the stuff from the top of the triple tree all the way down to the mounting point. Next we have a fork offset, uh, which represents the distance of the measure of the perpendicular line joining the center of the uh, stem of the fork. Uh, and the line connecting the centers of the fork tubes, um, usually varying between, um, well, mostly 30 and 80 millimeters. Um, next we have the triple tree rake. Um, so some manufacturers actually have uh, triple trees that are additionally raked. What that means is that the angle of the fork tubes is not the same as the angle of the fork stem. Uh, usually this is done to add uh, to correct for the trail in the overall geometry. And then lastly we have uh, uh, the tire sizes. Tire sizes are pretty standard. Uh, usually tires in modern day uh, have three numbers that represent uh, the overall dimensions of a tire. One is the width which literally represents the width of the tire. Uh, the second is the aspect ratio, um, uh, which represents a percentage of the width, uh, which then represents the height of the rubber uh, from the rim to the topmost portion of the tire, or the furthest most uh, portion. And then we have the last one is the rim size, which is essentially the diameter of the inner hole of the tire. So that's the overall measurements. Uh, with these measurements, um, this tool is able to essentially set up the geometry of um, a, uh, any motorcycle essentially, or a simplified version of it. Um, so let's uh, begin by initializing a simple um, setup here just so I can illustrate what uh, some of these actually represent. So we'll begin by, um, let's start with a, a frame that is that has no uh, stem rake. We'll also make it a little bit longer at, let's say 1400 millimeters. We'll leave the forks nice and long uh, just so we can play around with them. Uh, we'll also make the fork offset zero. Uh, we'll keep the triple tree rake at zero just so we can illustrate what it does. And in terms of the tire sizes, uh, let's make them uh, both the same. 
So we'll bump this one to 18 and down to 110. So there we are. We have two of the same tires uh, and a triple tree uh, that has no additional rake to it, no offset, uh, and a frame that has no uh, stem rake with the wheelbase of 1400. So when we initialize, this is essentially the motorcycle you would get. Now, this obviously is a very bad motorcycle. Um, if you were trying to ride something like this, you'd more than likely tip over the front wheel very easily. Um, so in order to uh, kind of help with the uh, visualization here, let's make some of the objects transparent just so we can see things a little better. So like I said before, the wheelbase was essentially the measure from this point down here to this point down here. Now, since our wheels are the same, this line that connects the two axles is actually parallel to the floor. However, if we were to change the size of one of the tires, let's say we make the front tire a smaller rim diameter. You can see how that line now begins to dip. And now we have this other line showing up here. This essentially represents um, the angle uh, going through the stem down to the ground. And this line here represents the uh, perpendicular line going to the, uh, from the axle to the floor um, representing the axle. So before we mess around with the tires, let's uh, kind of come back to the default state just so we can take a look at the other parameters first. Uh, so, remember how we made the stem rake zero? Well, I wanted to do that just so it's easier to illustrate things uh, afterwards. If we start to add a rake, you'll notice that the front wheel will start to move forward and we're going to create this additional angle here between the forks and this vertical line. And you can see that that now moves out forward and starts to look more like an actual motorcycle. Motorcycles nowadays vary in stem rake anywhere from, I believe, 20 up to some even go maybe up to 40 degrees in rake. For the illustration here, let's just keep it at 30, just a nice round number. Um, the next thing that we can show is the stem length. So this one doesn't really affect the geometry, but all it really represents is the length of the stem of the fork. So making longer or shorter, not very important, but still something um, nice to have to help visualize things a little bit better. Next, we have the fork length. Uh, with the initialization, we left it at 1000. That uh, is okay. Um, however, if we were to change it at this point, now that we have a, a, a rake involved, you'll see the entire motorcycle will start to dip forward, almost as if that top point is following an arc, meaning that this backbone line from the rear axle to the top of the stem actually remains static. So as we change it, you see that pivoting down and opening back up. And by extension, you can see that the line running through the stem down to the floor and the axle line actually get closer together or further apart, depending on how long the fork length is. This is actually an important tool that we'll actually use later on to illustrate or simulate rather uh, some of the scenarios that one might experience with telescopic forks. Next, we have the fork offset. Typically, motorcycles don't usually have a zero fork offset. The reason for that is that if you did, um, if all these three things, the stem and the two fork tubes are all in line, it would limit the amount of steering that the front end could actually achieve. Because you usually have a tank right around here, the amount of degrees that you can turn the front end would be limited by that tank. Uh, so usually to correct for that, as well as some of the um, trail created by the uh, rake and the fork length, manufacturers add fork offset. What that does is essentially it moves the fork tubes further forward uh, on a perpendicular line from the uh, fork stem. And that could be visualized by doing this. So as we increase the fork offset, you can see that we have this new rectangle kind of developing here um, with uh, 90 degree angles here and here. 
or actually all the way around, it is a rectangle. Uh, and the previous point that the axle was at actually starts to fall behind and dip below. This is uh, kind of a key point in um, motorcycle uh, suspension geometry um, because um, the line that goes through the stem still remains going through this key point right here instead of using the line that goes through the forks. Um, that's why this line is used to measure the uh, measure of trail. Uh, and the trail changes because uh, as we move the fork offset forward, we're actually moving the axle forward. So even though that point actually remains static, the axle is now moving closer to it, as you can see. Okay, so now that we have the fork offset, we move on to triple tree rake. So in some situations, uh, manufacturers um, might end up with a... Um, uh, a trail that is far too long. So if let's say we didn't have much fork offset or we had fork offset but the uh, stem rake was very long. So this produces a very long trail. What some manufacturers might do uh, to correct that further is they might add the triple tree rake. Triple tree rake essentially makes the bottom mounting point of the uh, triple trees and the fork tubes longer and offset than the top one. So that creates this additional angle between the fork tubes and the fork stem, as you can see. So now it kind of looks wonky uh, with that in there. But with that 10 degrees of uh, triple tree rake, we've reduced the trail to nothing. Actually, it's negative at this point. So Manufacturers would usually add like up to four degrees of triple tree rake. Um, one popular motorcycle that you could actually see this on uh, is the Harley Davidson V Rod. That motorcycle actually has some triple tree rake. And then the last two parameters that we have here are the fork diameter and the fork width. Much like the stem length, these are just there to kind of aid in the visualization. Uh, the fork diameter being the uh, the diameter of the fork tubes. So raising it up makes them thicker, lowering it down makes them thinner. And the fork width is the literal length of the front axle. So increasing it makes it wider and smaller. So now that we've seen how these uh, fork parameters affect the geometry, let's take a look at the tires. So up until this point, our tires were actually of the same size. But now that we have all these other complexities in place, let's see what the tires actually end up doing. So if we were to increase the front tire size, we actually increase the rake, or not the rake, the trail. Similarly, if we were to increase the rear tire size, we end up reducing the um, trail. The reason that happens is that if, um, you actually look at this, when we increase the rear tire size, the entire geometry ends up pivoting over the front axle, effectively tilting the front fork more and bringing in that straight line from the stem further back. Similarly, when we move the, when we increase the size of the front tire, we end up pivoting around the rear axle, um, moving the entire thing again up and down in the opposite direction. These will become very important in the uh, later simulations that we will do. So now that we know how, the, how to set up the fork geometry of a motorcycle, let's take a look at some real world examples of uh, motorcycles uh, and how their geometry actually looks like. So to start, let's take a look at a 2003 uh, Yamaha R6. So here we have um, the R6. You can kind of see that it's fairly short in wheelbase, um, has fairly short um, trail. The forks are nice and thick and beefy, but the amount of rake that's on there is actually pretty short. It's only 24. Now we compare that to a, a big cruiser like the Suzuki C90T from 2013. We can see that that motorcycle is much longer in wheelbase has a quite a bit more um, 
trail and with the longer forks and the bigger stem rake um, it pushes things out further and then finally uh, as a comparison we can take a look at going back to the R6 we can compare it with the Honda V45 Sabre from 1982 which I've been converting to a cafe racer so you can see that that motorcycle is quite a bit bigger but still not quite as big as the big cruiser so we have a slightly longer wheelbase than the R6 um, slightly more um, trail slightly more rake a little bit longer forks um, but overall all those parameters are smaller than on the um, Suzuki so now that we've seen these real, exam real world examples you might ask well how does this serve any purpose well the point here is that uh, we actually try to calculate the changes the quantitative changes to the motorcycle geometry when you do adjust things and to help us do that uh, we're going to be using we're going to now that we understand the geometry aspect of it uh, we're going to hide the geometry lines and we're going to show the labels so as i mentioned before on the sabre uh, we have about um, 15 uh, like a slightly longer wheelbase than the uh, R6, so that's 1570 millimeters, and on the R6 we have 1380, so almost um, uh, 200 millimeters, um, which is about uh, 20 centimeters um, in distance, or you can see it in inches, almost six inches uh, in change. The rake uh, on the Sabre is 29.5, and on the R6 is 24. And then those two combined with the rest of the parameters translate to uh, roughly 89 millimeters or 3.52 inches of trail on the R6 um, and 116 millimeters and 4.58 inches on the Sabre. So we roughly have an extra inch of trail. Now, what does that really mean? Um, with the uh, longer wheelbase and the longer trail, Essentially, the characteristics of the saber compared to the R6 are would classify it more so as a sports touring motorcycle than a performance canyon carver. Um, the larger rate trail uh, and wheelbase would make it more stable at highway speeds, uh, whereas the shorter wheelbase with the shorter trail. Uh, will make the bike a lot more maneuverable and easier to throw into corners and lean and so on and so forth. Um, and again, just for comparison, the large Suzuki here is, again, almost another half an inch of trail extra on top of the Saber and another uh, 100 millimeters in wheelbase longer. So definitely meant for cruising, not so much um, spirited riding uh, on twisties. So, now what do we do? Uh, well, we want to modify the Sabre um, in a way that more closely resembles the uh, R6, but at the same time keeping in mind uh, that this is a 38-year-old motorcycle and the suspension components on it are not meant to handle the same loads and uh, we should try to stay in the safe zones of certain parameters such that we don't build a death machine. So, uh, the easiest thing that we can do um, to begin with is uh, we can change the uh, fork length. Now, with my first saber that I modified, some of you might remember, I ended up cutting the springs. Now what that means uh, is that I essentially effectively reduced the fork length, but also the fork travel. Now if the bike remained unchanged, uh, what we're seeing here is essentially the motorcycle at rest with no load on the fork uh, and the fork fully extended. Um, and it, it's, with such conditions, we see that the trail is about four and a half inches or 116 millimeters. Uh, and based on Honda specifications, we know that the 
uh, fork travel on the stock saber is uh, roughly five and a half inches or about 140 millimeters. So in order to simulate the um, fork under full compression, uh, one could argue that uh, if we reduce the uh, fork length by 140 millimeters, uh, we should be seeing exactly that. So if we drop that 850 down to uh, 110, Uh, or as close as we can get to it, so 7, uh, 709, we end up with uh, 85 millimeters of trail. So that's still fairly good. Usually, uh, most manufacturers, uh, in order to keep things safe, will keep the trail uh, right between uh, 3 and 6 uh, inches. Um, so this pretty good. Uh, as a comparison on the R6, we have uh, 89 millimeters of trail at rest, uh, and the specifications on the R6 for 2003 say that the forks actually have four and a half inches of travel, which translates to about 114 uh, millimeters. Um, so if we reduce the uh, 725 by 114, we end up with about 610 millimeters. There we go. So that reduces it to 64 millimeters um, or 2.5, roughly 2.5 inches. Now, remember how I said that usually manufacturers try to keep it above 3 inches? Um, the reason the R6 is able to drop below it is that these conditions are almost never met. The forks on the R6 are significantly thicker and the uh, spring rates inside them are also significantly stronger. So the force required for the bike to actually compress the front forks down fully uh, is almost never met. Now on the saber that's a very different story. Uh, so with the old one when I ended up cutting off two inches from the springs not only did I drop the fork length down by 140 millimeters to um, 710, but also I reduced the uh, strength of the spring inside the fork. So the five and a half inches that the forks would have had as travel are now reduced to three and a half with two inches less spring in there to apply the force back. So uh, the reason uh, that was an unsafe setup is that even though the bottom most setup um, or the full compression uh, setup for the uh, forks uh, is still the same as the stock down to uh, 85 millimeters. It's not like the R6 where those conditions would almost never be met. Uh, in this case, because the springs are significantly weaker, it would actually be most of the time. So riding a motorcycle with very soft front end, almost at full compression of the forks, is not a safe scenario. While some might say that you know riding a hard tail is okay, riding a hard front is definitely not okay. So um, we need to do something different here. Instead of reducing the fork uh, travel uh, by cutting the springs, we should do something different in order to keep things safe. So let's reset our, uh, our, uh, our saber here back to its stock condition. So the first thing that we can do is um, we can uh, slide the forks up through the triple trees. That would essentially reduce the fork length, but keep the fork travel. Um, and um, what I've currently done on the bike already uh, is I've actually moved them up um, roughly uh, an inch and a quarter or about 32 millimeters. So that can be represented by changing this to 818. So that already uh, brought our trail down from um, 100 
uh, 16 millimeters at rest to 109 millimeters, so almost a quarter of an inch uh, down, which is great. Uh, it also reduced the overall wheelbase and the overall rake. Now you might say, well, wait, how come we have a stem rake of 29.5, but the actual rake is 28.5? Well, remember how uh, when we had the entire geometry displayed, and as we change parameters, things started to pivot around. Well, that initial setup of the stem uh, rake uh, was to, to essentially calculate the initial setup of the bike. After that point, anything you change to the stock motorcycle essentially modifies the geometry, rotates things around so that uh, that vertical line still stays the same, but the line connecting the trail and the top of the stem moves around so that angle changes so even though your stem rake still is the same your absolute rake changes okay so now back to uh, how do we make the saber even better um, at a 109 uh, millimeters of uh, trail at rest that sounds pretty good and since we kept the fork travel the same to simulate the conditions under full compression we can reduce uh, the uh, fork length by another 140 millimeters, um, bringing it down to uh, 678. Uh, 679 is closest. All right, so under full compression, we're still above the um, three inch kind of minimum limit for trail, which is pretty good. Um, we're still in the safe zone. Uh, we've reduced the wheelbase, we've reduced the trail, so the bike should behave a little bit more nimble uh, and still be fairly stable uh, at uh, higher speeds. But we can still do a little bit better. Than that. Now, in terms of fork changes, that's about it. Um, uh, unless I decide to change out the front, front end completely with a more modern front end. But honestly, at this point, I think this is fine. So... We're not going to touch the fork anymore. We're not going to touch the frame. The other thing that we can play with, as we saw in the initial steps, is that the tires actually made a big difference. So since the tires on the bike right now are quite old, um, I'm actually due for chain, to change them. Uh, so uh, one thing we can try is changing the front tire. As we saw before, increasing the front tire size uh, actually makes the trail longer and actually on the bike right now I don't have the stock tire size I actually have a 120 90 18 um, if we move back the fork to its stock state so the uh, 818 which was with the uh, 32 millimeter drop through the four through the triple trees we see that with that aftermarket tire that was changed by the previous owner, my trail is actually with the drop more than the stock bike was. The stock bike was 116 millimeters of trail, and mine is actually at four point at 117. So definitely need to change that front tire. Now having uh, a 120 in the front, not necessarily a bad thing. Generally speaking, uh, a wider tire does constitute a bigger contact patch. Some might say that means uh, more traction, but let's leave that topic for discussion for another time because it is a lot more complicated than just that. However, um, my goal is not to increase the trail. So at the 120 width, that's okay, but the tire is still too big. Now the rim size I can't change, or rather I don't want to. So the only other thing I can change is the tire aspect. So if we move the tire aspect down to a 120-80, we actually drop that back down to 107, which was two millimeters shorter than the uh, uh, stock setup with the forks being dropped through the triple trees. Not bad. Um, however, this tire size for a front motorcycle tire 120, 80, 18 is a tire size that you're going to have a very difficult time finding, if not impossible. 
uh, at least when it comes down to trying to find a tire like that that is for road use. There are some motocross tires like that, but not much from the major manufacturers in terms of road use. So this won't work. So then our next option is let's revert it back to stock. Okay, so we have a 110 9018. That still puts us at the 109 that we had, but we want to do better. So maybe we can find a tire that is still 110 so we don't compromise the width. But we make it slightly shorter, so maybe a 11080 uh, is what we could find. And we see that actually makes a significant difference. So we're now down to uh, 100 millimeters of uh, trail. So we're already below four inches of trail. Now that's a significant improvement. That is almost half an inch, actually more than half an inch uh, in trail difference from the stock bike. So this definitely a positive. And it just happens so that 110, 18, uh, 110 80 R18 is a very common tire that you can find uh, for, for the front of your motorcycle from almost any brand and any model. So that's perfect. So let's keep that. Now let's, since I do have an old tire in the back, it is due for a change as well. And since we're at this point of trying to make this bike even better, why not? Try to play around with those dimensions to improve this even further. Um, so with the rear tire, uh, one thing we can do is we can certainly bump up the size to a 140 on the back, which I've heard on the forums that will fit on this rim. That's okay. However, keeping a 140-90 on there makes the tire quite tall. And at that point, we end up risking the tire actually rubbing on the frame where the seat is or on the swing arm itself uh, when it spools up at high speed and expands in the center. So we definitely don't want that. Uh, so we need to cut the size down a bit. But if we can keep the 140, that'd be great. So maybe a 140-80 is what we want. Now, that is actually not bad because as we see, the trail actually bumped up to 102 to exactly four inches, which is great. Um, the wheelbase is reduced from the uh, uh, stock size by 16 millimeters, which is actually good. And our rake has actually dropped down from uh, the stock value uh, to uh, 1.3 degrees less. So we actually have a bike that should handle quite a bit differently and some would argue a little bit more nimble and a little bit more fun to ride. Um, now with that, the one last thing that we should double check before we you know, pull the trigger and buy some parts and swap them out, what does that mean uh, under full compression conditions? So going back to our fork length here, if we pull that back down to um, 678, oops, 678, we're now down below the um, three inch um, <clears throat> minimum that manufacturers usually try to stay above. Now, as I said before, uh, these forks are not by any means uh, able to handle the same forces like the R6. So these, this condition of full compression is indeed more likely than it is on the R6. However, at 2.8, that's still not too bad. Uh, we're actually looking at okay. Uh, conditions under braking. Now mind you, um, the forks are still not fully set up with the proper air pressure in them. I am changing out the springs to progressive springs which should give a little bit extra force in there to be able to stiffen up the front end a little bit. Um, and I am using, uh, I am changing out the oil in there so that maybe we'll get a little bit better performance. So that's great. Um, this actually gives me 
really good idea on uh, what I can do um, with my motorcycle. Uh, now the only thing remaining is to kind of enjoy the view. And to do that, let's hide these labels, reveal the geometry, and take a look at what the bike will look like. Pretty cool. Um, now, the, for the best part, um, this tool is actually available on my website. So make sure to uh, check it out. Go to balkanmoto.com uh, uh, and you'll find the link down at the bottom where the tools are. Uh, it's a suspension geometry. I'll also put a link uh, in the description. Uh, you can certainly use the custom configurator with the specs by the manufacturer to set up your bike and then play around with the numbers there to see what different changes uh, will affect and whether or not your bike will be safe or not. Um, now this it's important to mention here that this version of this uh, tool is very simplified um, and it doesn't cover the overall picture of the motorcycle suspension and geometry. Of course, it only deals with uh, front-end suspension and doesn't consider back-end at all, um, but that is the initial version. I do plan on adding um, more complexities to it, like the rear suspension, potentially adding some little triggers on there to be able to quickly compute uh, full compression and uh, rest states, maybe even adding some um, uh, physics simulations by adding in the rider weight and uh, sag into the forks and the suspension. So definitely stay tuned and make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications uh, because those updates will be coming soon. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at bakamon2018 and definitely leave some comments on this video letting me know if you like this tool, um, if uh, you feel like tools like this would be helpful to have and um, stay safe. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.